Flatline Blades got something really cool, really different. This is one of those things that uh, if you've been in the knife world for a minute, you know what this is probably. Even though it's a model that a lot of people probably haven't seen. And yes, it looks like it's got a layer of something sticky on here, but I kind of did that on purpose, and I'll explain here in a minute. Um, <clears throat> but this is a Paragon. So, the blade is basically encapsulated... It's got a very, very unique, patented, only no, uh, this is the only one that I know of that does anything like this. I'm sure there's a bunch of cool creative stuff that I haven't seen or heard of yet, but this particular one is the uh, kind of a newer version of it. Call it a dreadlock. It's a Tonto blade, it's two-tone. I thought this color difference right here was kind of interesting, but then I realized why. So right here, up until this point, it's it's flat right here. But after that, the entire handle starts tapering in, getting a little bit narrower, which is pretty awesome. Um, just because it, it, it's different. This is what makes this really, really unique. You squeeze the pivot together, both sides. It spreads the handles apart. Just by pressing the pivot. And this is a gravity knife. So when you... When you hold it down, it just, it opens it up enough to let the blade go. And so, there you go. Now, I've only had it like, uh, fucking 20 hours, so it's not like I'm a master of this thing yet. But, and I'm trying to hold my camera. I ordered a, a phone mount so I could start doing a little bit better video setup. I've got better lighting in here now. And I decided to uh, bring a desk inside, so instead of being outside in the shop, having branches hitting the thing, and it be sweat my ass off out there, because it's not insulated, it's kind of stupid to have an AC out there, and with it being 105 degrees, I would just be burning a bunch of electricity for no reason. Um, but anyway, this is sick. I, I've wanted it for a long time. I know that usability, it's probably not the best knife in the world because of the design of it. You see, because how it is, there's nothing connecting the back of the handle together. There can't be, otherwise it wouldn't be able to open like it does. So what that means is the two handle scales can shift on each other a little bit in the back. Now, it is extremely tight tolerance considering this entire thing is not connected together except for the pivot. So, considering it barely moves is pretty damn amazing to begin with. And I've realized that when you grasp it and hold it good, there is going to be no movement. But if you barely grab it, and then you're going to try to use this as a real hardcore, you know, do some actual real use with it, then this is going to move on you a little bit. See, like I'm putting sideways pressure on it and it's pushing the, the handle. But as far as a cool factor, as far as a fidget factor, as far as a what the hell is that factor, this thing is pretty sick. So <clears throat> I have bench made. Um, I put a thick coating of Benchmade Blue Lube on here. I know that that sounds stupid and they're like, man, it looks stupid. It's all 
looks like you ran it across some glue and just left it there. Well, you got to understand and see something from a different perspective. With this being a unique knife and opening how it does, there's also friction going on when it's sliding into inside the handle, meaning against the blade. So, very pissed off. Um, the very first couple times I was struggling to open it, because I was trying to get, you know, the movement and everything right, I already scratched the blade itself on the, on the flats because it was grinding on the inside of the handle when I wasn't wasn't realizing it and before I lubed it up before I got the hang of it a little bit and so that shit had pissed me off and so I purposely cleaned the hell out of it lubed it up good now I know the movement. I know how to open and close it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. But, so I purposely did that. That way it'll help if it is going to hit the handle somehow when it's sliding back inside. It's going to glide in there a little bit better and easier instead of biting and scratching on the actual blade. But now that I know how to do it better, now that it's all good lubed up, I don't think it's going to be doing what it was doing right when I first opened it. So my point is I was mad because it scratched the hell out of it the very first four or five times I opened it because it wasn't lubed up good and I didn't know exactly how to hold this and what not to do because <laughs> I've realized that if you have any kind of pressure on the handle not the pivot when you're opening it one way or another it is going to affect it opening all the way or it's going to push one side slightly than the other and that's where the problem comes anyway so this is a Paragon Dreadlock by Asheville Steel. Man, look at look at how much that's already hit that thing. That's crazy. You see all of that? That's the reason why I made sure that I put pretty good amount of lube on the whole thing and purposely left it thick like that but cool factor fidget factor what the hell is that factor this thing is sick really 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 awesome really unique really different very cool very fun now that I know how to use it it is pretty cool All right, flatline blades, I'm out. Paragon, Dreadlock, Two-Tone, Tonto. The whole handle ends up tapering down a little bit. I just think it's really cool. It's really different. It's unique. word